Back in 2015, after steady Eddie Gary Bowyer, Venkis and co. decided to dig deep and opt for an experienced manner to try and revive Blackburn Rovers' fortunes by bringing in Paul Lambert. The wise manager seemed a bold move for Rovers in their current predicament, however things never really fell into place for Rovers and Lambert. And after a disagreement between the two parties, Lambert left Ewa Park for the last time. But what if we could bring Lambert back to try and dig us out of this mess we found ourselves in at the start of the season? Could he achieve what Mowbray has? Is what Tony accomplished so hard that any manager could do it? What kind of football would Lambert adopt in League One? Let's find out, shall we? So here we are, folks, with the second of my Blackburn Rovers uh, Football Manager 2018 experiments, when we simulate the 2017-2018 season, but with a old Blackburn manager. And in this uh, example, we're going to be using Paul Lambert. So let's just bring him up so you can see what I'm talking about. So basically, it's like time has stood still and we did not appoint Owen Coyle and we did not appoint Tony Mowbray. It's just basically um, that... We're trying to simulate the season if Paul Lambert was still in charge. So we're going to, obviously, at the end of this experiment, we will see how well Blackburn Rovers have performed with Lambert in charge. So just to, there's just a little, just a bit of a confirmation to show you that he is the governor. And before we jump into the experiment, I'll just showcase the actual squad. Here they are. Quick overview. Bradley Dack, most valuable player, 7.5 million. Charlie Mulgrew, 4.7 down and 4.1 million. Smallwoods in there, 3.2 million. And we do have... All the loanies, the correct loanies that we would have at the end of the season, including Harry Chapman. And he's, he's actually fit. So that's good news. And even including this little toss pot. I mean, a uh, 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 little, uh, uh, yeah, Jack Payne. Jack Payne's also in there. So we're going to fast forward now to the end of the season to see just how well Blackburn Rovers perform with Paul Lambert at the helm. So here we are, folks, at the end of the season, 31st of May 2018. Now, if you've not checked out the previous episode, I'm just going to give you a little bit of a spoiler. So in the last episode, Owen Coyle managed to finish the season. League One as number one with a tally of 86 points. Now, what we're trying to do to see, basically at the end of this whole series, we're going to have a little league structure to see who has the best points tally, that kind of stuff of the previous Blackburn manager. So let's just see just how well uh, Paul Lambert has done and just compare that to what Owen Coyle, has, uh, Owen Coyle achieved in his experiment. So let's bring up Blackburn. Ooh, this does not bode well for Paul Lambert. Or instantly, straight from that, you can tell we finished seventh. Finished seventh in the table. So that's, um, that is instantly terrible. Instantly terrible. You know, obviously we want instant promotion, but instantly terrible. Let's take a look at the league itself. We don't even, we don't even make it to the playoffs. So in this experiment, Fleetwood managed to uh, secure promotion. Oxford... Um, also got themselves promoted. Northampton in third place. Pompey, uh, Peterborough, Wigan make the playoffs. Blackburn Rovers just miss out on 72 points. That is miserable. Absolutely miserable. It makes makes things worse as that fellow Scott and ex-Dingle or current Dingle, whatever you want to call him, Owen Coyle, did so much better than Paul Lambert. So I'm just taking notes here. So Blackburn Rovers lost 14 times under the managerial ship of Paul Lambert. That's two uh, more than Owen Coyle did. But Owen Coyle managed to get us promoted and even champions. In the, and the points return of 72 points is absolutely shocking. So let's take a look at the actual Blackburn Rovers squad. See what went wrong uh, with the boys. So here we are, folks. Still, oh, there has been some additions. Though. Let's, uh, we'll, uh, we'll take a look at the transfers, actually, before we uh, get into the nitty-gritty. So Victor Anichibi arrived on a free transfer. Uh, he's only 30 years old, valued at now 6 million. He's come in, uh, didn't really set the place on fire with only six goals. He was actually in China. In fact, he was at Sunderland, got released, went to China, didn't do that very well, come back to the UK uh, to play with Rovers and did pretty pats. Luke Hendry from Shrewsbury arrived. He's actually now stuck in the under 23, so maybe one for the future, 23 years old. Um, yeah, just the two appearances for Rovers. Then we have Jesus Garcia Tina, 27-year-old uh, defender. Again, looks like he's stuck in the uh, under-23s. So didn't really make the break, formerly of Edinburgh City. 
What on earth are you thinking, Paul Lambert? You're scraping the barrel here. And Steve Bushwin are from Arsenal on loan. Not a bad pickup, to be honest with you. Given the number seven jersey, only 15 appearances. So, yeah. Uh, as for the outs, Craig Conway, um, back to Dundee. Isn't that where we got him from? No, we got him from Dundee. In fact, he played Dundee United. We got him from uh, from Brighton. But yeah, back to Scotland and back into the Scottish Prem. So not not bad season for Craig Conway uh, in Dundee. Also out the door is Paul Caddis. Uh, he went to also joined um, Dundee and had a pretty decent season. Uh, who else is the other one? Lewis Corey is one of our youngsters, Australian. He went to Watford um, and he played a couple games this season. No, he did not. He did not play any games this season. As for the Lonies, Charlie Doyle, Tyler McGlory, and Joe Grayson all loaned out. Lewis Thompson. So no no real casualties. To be honest with you, they're not bad sales. And to be honest with you, they, they ended up in a good place, good home with some first-team action. So let's take a look at the first-team squad and some of the statistics. Uh, David Raya, 54 appearances. Richie Smallwood in there with 50 appearances. Ryan Nimbys. Uh, had a good out in 42 appearances. Bradley Dack in there. Paul Downing. All above 40 appearances plus, plus multiple substitutes uh, appearances. As for goals, top goal scorer was Adam Armstrong. No question there. 19 goals. And then second, Victor Anichibi with nine. Bennett got eight. Uh, Chapman got six. DG only with a six goals, 11 starts. As for the assists, the man creating all the magic. Uh, just like Owen Coyle is Elliot Bennett with nine assists. And the best player on the pitch. Uh, was Danny Graham with his, his 7.32 average. So why don't you play him? Why don't you play him? Uh, Derek Williams with a 7.14. Why don't you play him? Is it because you bought that weird fancy back? Elliot Bennett with a 7.08. And Adam Armstrong with a 7.05. So let's take a look at uh, some of the um, other player statistics. Uh, Paddy Madden, once again, tops the goal scoring t charts between one goals. Ian Doyle's also in there, just like Coyles uh, with from Oldham, uh, he has got 19 goals. Jack Marriott's there with 19. Then Armstrong. Charlie Wyke uh, wraps up the top five as for the best players of the season. Reese James, full Wigan, 7.39. Average Paddy Madden's there with second. Uh, Anthony Grant, 7.29. Michael Jacobs, 7.26. And Josh Tiemann, again, he also topped the charts in the uh, other experiment. Top assist maker is Ben Pringle uh, for Oldham. James Coppinger is 37 years old, but he was in second place with 13. Brett Pittman's also... Got 13, so they were joint second. Carl Dempsey, Michael Jacobs in joint fourth with 11. So let's take a look at around the football world, or especially the English football world anyway, and have a look at uh, who won what. Look at this, Man United top the uh, Premier League in this simulation. As for the next season down, who got relegated? Swansea, Crystal Palace, and Southampton. As for the championship, who's going to experience Premier League football? Middlesbrough, they did the business in the previous ones. Sheffield Wednesday joined them. Hull also in there. Relegated, Forest, uh, Sheffield United, and Barnsley. Then we go into the League One. We've already seen this, but we'll take another look. Fleetwood, Oxford, they, get, they go up. Wigan joined them via the playoffs. Um, so realistically, yeah, well, not realistically, it's pretty horrific. But Wigan and Blackburn had pretty woeful seasons, um, but very comparable. Plymouth, uh, Doncaster, Bristol Rovers and Gillingham are relegated. As for League Two, uh, Coventry, Swindon and Luton are promoted and Lincoln joined them by the playoffs. Crew barely survive in the Football League, but Newport and Grimsby are doomed. So here we are, folks. This is what we're going to rack up on the tally. Uh, so Lambert, basically, bottom of our league structure right now with 72 points. Uh, Coil tops of pops with 86 points. But there are many, many managers still to come. So join me in the next episode where we will bring back, that's right, Team GB. Gary Bowyer will return to manage Blackburn Rovers. And let's just see how well he does in charge in the next episode. Yeah.